Yeah. It's early. Yeah. We're at Hoon again. It's actually not that early, but I woke up early for no reason. That's Matt ruining the audio in our shot. Hi, Matt. It's okay. I ruin a lot of things. Yeah. And uh, we're going to try to fit 12 cars in a very small opening. Yeah, but I'm leading, though. Oh, I already called it. I said I'm leading. The big red car leads. The tall one. Everybody can see me. We'll put a flag on the top of it. So we're going to try to do that. I don't know if it's going to work, but I'm going to tell you this anyway so that we attempt it and you guys see our either success or failure. And uh, we're going to try. And I'm going to try to not break an axle with this low speed stuff. But first, we're probably going to have pizza at noon. It's going to be cool. And we're going to leave right as soon as we're done. We're going to put the car on the trailer and go home. And Matt's going to do the same thing. And everyone else is going to drive with their miserable car so I'm going to be tired. <laughs> no, I think some people are shipping their shit. I'm not sure. But I'm so ready to go home. I had so much fun, but I'm so ready to go home. Yes. Yep. The team just finished up. Adam tanked the container. Also almost ripped his A-pillar off underneath the, the tractor. But we were stacked pretty tight. Luke ran over a tire, dragged it around the whole donut thing and then spit it out at me. He punted all of the ones at the corner of the container that were gonna let him know he was too deep and he just smashed the container with the back of the chaser. It was tight, it was clean. Our donuts at the end were super, like I couldn't even steer because our wheels were locked. It was perfect. But ours wasn't dangerous probably enough, so we're probably not going to win. Alright, so we're here last day. I figured I'd go over the cars a little bit. Feeling Shredder's S14, 1J, big turbo, 450-ish. Yeah, Trevor's S550 Mustang with a 2J, about 550 horsepower. Adam LZ's JZX100, about 350 horsepower. And then we have Brandon Wicknick's IS, similar to Fielding's car, a little bit less power maybe, maybe about the same. Um, Dustin's S13, 1J, big turbo, similar power, maybe a little bit less than the other two cars, that's 375 or so. Matt Field, Corvette, NA, LS, big, like 416 cubic inch, like maybe bigger, 500 plus NA. Um, 
Dan's car, which is LS. Two. LS2, four, 460 t at the tires. Pretty well prepped car. He had a Z before that, that he flipped the trailer on and then blew the motor on the next event. My car, the Ugly Duckling, like 320 horsepower. Luke's car, the heaviest car here and the least amount of power, probably 250 at the tires. Axel has a Corvette that makes about uh, 400-ish and he's on his second motor for the trip. And then Aaron Losey shipped in another car just for today and Grange, which has like a 500 horsepower LS. That's probably one of the fastest cars here because his first car didn't work, which is an SC300. Are you talking about how everyone's gonna crash today? No, I was just saying, all the cars are together. Let's talk about them really quick. <laughs> <laughs> this never happens. Yeah, no, this so. is sick fleet, man. You guys did good. I think it's very diverse. You guys, no, yeah. And we're a bunch of assholes, so it's perfect. A little bit of everything. We made it home. We've been on the road for how long? Too long. About two weeks. About two weeks too long. Two weeks too long. Yeah. No, it was a it was a long trip. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I, I flew out to St. Louis in the middle of it all, um, but I'm happy to be home and uh, probably gonna leave this car on the trailer for three weeks and not look at it because it needs some work. But I'm kind of over it right now. Um, and we got to get back to doing other stuff like planning a wedding and finishing our house and all sorts of other things that are more important than this thing at the time. But uh, the trip overall was awesome. I mean, it was, for me, it would have been, let's see, we did uh, the Texas event, Albuquerque, then three days in St. Louis driving, uh, like five demos a day, and then Muscle Man, and then... Adam's Cart Track. Adam's Cart Track, Grange. Grange. And Hoonigan, right? Mm -hmm. So it would have been nine days of driving over the course of about 13 days. Um, the first half of the trip for me was like six or seven days of driving in six or seven days. And then the second half was a little bit more chill. We got to hang out with everybody and really kind of like get to know some of the people that were on the trip. Obviously, I know a lot of them, but not like at that personal level, which was really cool. We got to rent some cars and go up in the canyons and have some fun. I'm sure you guys have seen most of these videos. If you haven't, obviously just click our channel and just watch some of them. Um, but what was really cool is like the overall ambiance of everything. It was like a lot of fun, uh, obviously, but a lot of different cars, a lot of different characteristics of people, a lot of different driving styles, but all kind of working together, which was kind of interesting to me because like at FD when you go to these events those things don't necessarily work out together you know you're doing this complex like okay well Matt's FD Corvette is like really good here and not so great here and then maybe Matt's really good at this type of driving and not so much of this and then collectively like his car matches my car here but not here and then all these complex things that you have to kind of take into consideration because the cars are on the edge and the tracks are short so any little mistake um, can be amplified. So like, it's kind of cool that everybody kind of measured up their cars and leveled them out to work. You know, like there was a group of fast cars and then a group of slower cars. Uh, but then we also, as the faster cars, would kind of chase the slower cars and vice versa and kind of play around. So that way everybody had a chance to be on everyone's door. And then depending on who we were driving with, I would like adjust my car so that it would be faster or slower or whatnot just because you don't want to burn out on anybody on in the lead position and you don't want to be you know super slow in in the lead position either and kind of cause people to have some drama behind you um, or in the chase the same thing like getting caught up and slammed into people and not being able to spin the tires so it was a balance it was a lot of fun different tracks and dialing in the car for each of those um, this car particularly did much better at all the car tracks so <clears throat> um, we were able to just mob everyone pretty much at any of the car tracks. Uh, the bigger tracks, it was kind of maxed out and we had to kind of drive straight for a little bit in some sections and, you know, try to stay on doors any way possible. But um, I think the evolution of this uh, drift week thing is kind of cool because I think you'll start seeing like us guys build cars particularly for this, which I pretty much had a car for this already because um, that was kind of my plan. Not necessarily Drift Week, but I wanted a car I could have fun on, uh, driving around on the street, use it to get around uh, for one, just one an exciting car and also go to the track and drive. So we can drive this to the track, drift and come home. 
simple, no loading trailers and all that crap. Um, but I think you'll start seeing some more evolution of this streetcar mentality uh, where, you know, people build cars, they drive on the track and drive back and forth. And it's a suitable car. It's not just the guy's only car he's going to drift event. You know, it's built up to be that type of car. Um, and hopefully some people start, you know, maybe doing some of their own trips and traveling and, you know, doing more uh, experience style trips that pack a lot of driving into a short period of time. Um, you know, for, for ours, it was a little stressful at times. Um, I know I went through only like 18, 16 or 18 tires overall which was cool because, you know, the tires are consumables are tough. Um, so it keeps the cost down building a car like that. Um, and then also, um, I probably broke, let's say I broke one axle, one stub shaft, like two or three two tire axles, rods. Wasn't no, it? it was just one, one axle, right? One in Texas and then a stub shaft in oh, you're right. at Adams. We thought it was the axle. I pulled it all apart, but it was a stub shaft. Uh, so one axle, one stub shaft, like three tie rods, uh, one drive shaft, Guibo, Jubo, however you want to pronounce it. It's actually Jubo. Um, we did one oil change. The truck and trailer didn't have any beef, um, so that was good. I think that, oh, and a radiator that we JB welded back together and a tensioner. That was my list of damaging things and none of them actually caused us to miss out on much driving you know axles 15 minutes to change like it's the same as almost changing and mounting a pair of tires so the tensioner made us miss some of the day i had to run to get some parts and then fcp overnighted us some parts to get the right ones on there and we got those on at adams and it was perfect um but the car literally could fire up right now and go drive some more events so it's kind of cool with that i'd like to put a radiator in it to get rid of the jb weld but it's holding right now. I should just leave it. Um, and the clutch fan works amazing. We didn't have any cooling problems whatsoever once we put the clutch fan back on. We were getting a 215, 220, uh, getting a little bit hot. And then we put an OEM um, diesel clutch fan and X5 uh, fan clutch itself, like the actual unit. So it can be stacked in there with the S54 or the stock rad, well, stock rad placement and all that. Uh, and it works really well. So I definitely will be running those in pretty much everything I build. I know they, they lose like 25 horsepower at the wheels, but the cooling is way worth it in my opinion, especially uh, in the summer. Um, but yeah, overall, Drift Week was rad. I'm excited to do another one next year. We'll have some details of that coming up soon. We've all been kind of, we don't really know what we're doing yet. We're still downloading from this trip and whatnot. But um, I think the key is to do another one, but maybe in a different part of America. We've also talked about maybe doing an international one international one sounds insanely expensive um, and sort of disastrous but I think for me I would just plan on getting a car over there that maybe was very close to stock you know like maybe if we did one in Europe or something I could get like a Mustang and put a radiator in it and a steering kit and leave the rest of it stock um, that way maybe it's not as competitive but it would run the whole time and I wouldn't be wrenching on it a ton so we'll see um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think of the video. Uh, I'll jump in the comments here, try to do it a few times a week, as always, um, and try to reply to the ones that aren't total bullshit. So if you have a good question, pop it in there. And uh, if you haven't watched the rest of the Drift Week videos, um, I'll get a playlist together so you guys can watch it all together and uh, enjoy some of the fun we had. And uh, what do we got next? We got Pennzoil 400 coming up. Some testing, which Chelsea's gonna go to testing and shoot some content. So we're going to show you guys what it's like to be at an FD test uh, with my new chassis. So that's exciting. New livery. Lots of new stuff. So uh, pay attention, and I'll see you guys later.